This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hi everybody, I'm joined in studio by Az from Mythic Games and today we're doing something a little bit different. So, this isn't something we've really done before, so we're, we're <laughs> dubbing this one the Alpha Play. So, <laughs> you guys have brought in a, a new board game that yep. you guys are going to be bringing to Kickstarter in the near future. That's right. So, this this is Super Fantasy Brawl. This is something that we're going to be bringing uh, to Kickstarter to kind of... Uh, it's going to be a pre-order kind of system. We haven't got to decide exactly how it's going to be, but mm -hmm. Super Fantasy Brawl will be a retail-focused product that we're going to be launching in 2020. Uh, but we will be hopefully giving our, our kind of backers and fans a chance to get into it early before mm -hmm. the retail launch. So, there's more to come on that later. So what we've brought away, brought with you, is an early prototype. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, all these components are very much prototyping, very much very not clean. final. Board cards, champions, even though they're painted by the wonderful Seb Levine. And mm -hmm. um, this is all kind of early testing, and we've got quite a few months ahead of us still, where we're going to be refining this. Mm -hmm. But we were here; we couldn't not bring it, of show course. it to you all, everyone at Beast of War, and let you guys get a little taste through of it really ahead of time. So. Give it, yeah. There's still, still early, still tweaks to be made. Yeah, see, th this is the thing. Whenever companies like this come in with a new game like this, it's like, you know, that first hit's free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Should we chat a bit about what we're going to be doing? Uh, in fact, what I'd like to hear first yeah. is you give me a quick synopsis <laughs> of the background to this yeah. game. So I would love to get that first and then take Abs us on a quick tour of the board. Absolutely. So we will definitely have a proper video where you guys can delve into the world of Super Fancy Brawl. Yeah. We'll do that with, with the guys of Beast, of, of course. course. Um, but to give you guys an idea at home, what we have is a world called Fabulosa, mm -hmm. where there was years and millennia and generations of war mm -hmm. with fantasy races, dwarfs, goblins, ogres, trolls, all fighting and warring for, for all time, mm -hmm. essentially. And then wizards managed to harness the three schools of magic, the mm -hmm. cores of magic, destruction, creation, and manipulation. And by harnessing all three together, they made true magic. Mm -hmm. And they made everything perfect. You wanted a house, Boofy had a house. You wanted some food, Boofy had some food. You wanted anything in the world, everyone had it. All the civilizations were happy, the world was a utopia, and it was amazing, and it was really boring. Because <laughs> everyone had everything they wanted. For many years, this kind of went on. The wizards, kind of with nothing to do, would argue and bicker, and they'd never kind of be able to find any way to fill their time until one wizard, we have three wizards actually who invented the Super Brawl. Mm -hmm. They came together over an argument essentially trying to decide who the greatest champions of all the wars throughout the years ah. of Fabulosa ever was and they decided the only way they could work out who the strongest champions were was to go back in time, bring them to now and have them battle in the arena <laughs> of the Super Brawl to work out the strongest champions. So we're playing as wizards, mm -hmm. picking our favorite fantasy characters, whether they're pirates, uh, dwarves, sorcerers, swordsmen, whatever it may be, going into the arena and trying to find the strongest. See, I think my beard needs to be a little bit longer if I'm right? a wizard. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I want a championship cumberbund. I want, you know, I want, oh, you want pointy hats. I want staffs. I want everything. Yeah. This is, but as I say, we're kind of at the moment, developing this to be an easy accessible game, so something mm -hmm. everyone can kind of find cool champions they want to get on board with, but very tactical, which I know we're going to get into. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you taught me this game in what, five, ten minutes yeah, max? Yeah. And then you're up, you're running, and you know exactly what you're up to. Yep. So uh, how about a quick tour of the board? Cool. So in front of us, we have the arena, first of all. And uh, the arena is broken into hexes, which I think you know, everyone's obviously going to be familiar with. We have two deployment zones. So we have the red deployment, five spaces, the blue deployment, five spaces. Mm -hmm. We have three uh, zones here, which are an um, obstructed terrain. There's actually going to be three statues here. To help viewers at home, I've actually pillaged the Beast of War uh, terrain stack. So I'm going to use these three pillars to help everybody see at home that these are actually three um, obstructions in the way. Mm -hmm. And then around those, we also have scoring zones. So we have yes. we have uh, the uh, yellow area here. Uh, this is the control area, destruction area in the red, and then the manipulation. Oh, sorry, this is creation, sorry, destruction and manipulation in the blue. So these are areas that will come up as we're completing challenges. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be trying to get to five victory points. Mm -hmm. That's how you win. Yep. But you'll get victory points not just by knocking out opponent champions, mm -hmm. by also uh, completing challenges which will appear on the challenge track. And we have a challenge deck, uh, which I'm going to shuffle essentially just to kind of get it a bit randomized for us mm -hmm. and then these are going to be challenges that we'll both be fighting over and when you score them we'll give you different amounts of victory points depending on kind of how riled up the crowd are mm -hmm. and how you're able to time your strategy yeah so to get going i want to get going so the first thing going. we do whenever we start the game is show the first two challenges mm -hmm. um, so, uh -huh. so this one says have a champion adjacent to each statue so if, it's, if you at the start of your turn have a champion beside each one of these statues mm -hmm. you will score that at the start of your turn okay 
the next challenge that we'll be moving along this track is have two or more champions adjacent to a uh, Ragnarok statue. That's the creation. Ragnarok uh. is our dwarven wizard who's inspired by the forge and creation magic. Mm -hmm. So we both know, before we even start anything, that these are the two first challenges available to us. Mm -hmm. And we will score them at the start of our turn. So we want to position so we're there ready for them when we're about to start. Yeah, and the way this always works, your opponent always gets a chance to knock you off That's the it. pedestal, which yep. is nice. It's, it's you're trying to put as much on your opponent's plate so they can't deal with it all when it comes to, to their turn. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, before we kick off, let's introduce our Yes, team, perfect. We're kind of running a little bit preset for this one, but in the main game you were saying there's a, a sort of pick and ban system you guys are going to use? So the game is completely faction free. Mm -hmm. So what we have here are kind of six core champions that we're using to kind of show off the game initially. These show off the basics of moving and pushing and, and tactical mm -hmm. play, um, but we have a ton more champions in development right now that are going to introduce a lot of different keywords, a lot of different skills and things and strategies. Um, so when you play, you can just freely pick your team mm -hmm. from whatever champions you wish, or if you want to play a little bit more competitively, we will have a kind of uh, picking and banning where we bring five champions each mm -hmm. and we pick and ban opponents champions and pick our own until we have three champions to take into that game. Mm -hmm. Each of the three champions comes with six cards. Mm -hmm. Once you have your three, you get an 18 card deck made up of six, six and six, mm -hmm. depending on your final team. Yeah. Now, uh, just to quickly introduce my own team. Yeah. Uh, so I've got Suzai, yep. with Jade Claw. So this is our Tigaran swordsman, mm -hmm. um, very, very noble, once a farmer, really very much wants to focus on the happiness of his tribe and his family. He's very noble, he doesn't want riches, doesn't want glory, mm -hmm. he's just very kind of honorable. Mm -hmm. um, and he's very focused on retaliation, revenge, and counterattacking. Mm -hmm. I then have Dugrin, the dwarf. Warden of the North, he's mm -hmm. our, you might think of him if you're a D&D fan as a traditional fighter, but he's imbued by magic. He's able to control blizzards, he's able to affect the entire battlefield, mm -hmm. very good at holding down positions, really holds the door as far as dwarves go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really got a game of <laughs> Gotta do it, gotta do it, man. Uh, and then we have Darren. Huntress of the Eastward. She is our human hunter, very good at manipulating traps on the board, which we'll get to in a little bit. She's very much um, about the people she wants mm -hmm. to serve. And I should say, in, in the lore of the world, the idea is that if each one of these champions do win the Super Bowl, they'll be granted their eternal wish and sent back into their time. The wizard oh. will basically return them back to where they came from mm -hmm. with their wish. And every champion has a very different drive. And mm -hmm. Darren's is to take down the evil lord that's uh. essentially ruling over her wood and making her people suffer. Nice. Um, so I will give you my three. Of I'm course. going to see if the best, the best to last for me, actually. <laughs> so first up, I've just given you uh, Gwen. Gwen is our high elf sorceress, the gathering storm. Mm. She's a master of destruction magic, mm. high damage, high output, very low health, very fragile. But she, yeah, she, um, in, in her lore, she wipes out entire armies with the click of a finger and, 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 and sweep of her hand. She's just so, so powerful. Mm. And her wish is to control all three cores of magic creation, manipulation and destruction, Ooh. essentially becoming uh, like a wizard. That's what she wants. Ah. So she's power hungry. <laughs> Talking about hungry, we have Kilgore the Ravager. He is a troll, but not a troll in your traditional sense. He's very much, um, very wise, very Ooh. smart, a leader of his people. He has this dark steel armor and terrible gauntlet and maul. He's an all-in brawler, close range, doesn't like being uh, at range at all. He likes being in your face, chomping and stealing life, Ooh. eating his opponents. Well, some vampiric. He is, he is brutal. Mm -hmm. And the last one, My your favorite. favorite champion from lore and play, Goldar, Scourge of the Several Seas. There is some argument about how many seas he is the Scourge of, but we do know his ship, the Grave Robber, was the most feared ship of all his time, yeah. and he once fought a shark just to get a gold doubloon out of its teeth. <laughs> uh, Kilgore, or sorry, Goldar is your typical pirate ship. He is actually an ogre. Uh, you might notice he's much bulkier than any of our other humans that we have, yeah. or else that we have. He's very, very hard to move. Yeah. Well, interesting stuff. Cool. So, uh, shall we begin? Yes. So, so, we know what the challenges are mm -hmm. that we have available. So, with this kind of open information, even though they were drawn ram randomly, mm -hmm. we just need to decide the first player. Okay. Um, so, I've got a, a, a red token um, just at the minute. This is just a prototype. Yeah a red and a blue side. So I've got blue, you've got red. I'll pop it in. Yeah, just blue. So I shall start. Uh, you go first. Um, so uh, what we're going to do first of all is we've got a random pool of trap tokens. I'll bring them in so they're just on the board here. And what we're going to do is randomly draw these all alternating and place them on one of the six trap hexes. There are six trap hexes on the board. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously don't want you going near the yellow creation statue, Ragdoll statue. So I'm going to pick the first one and place it on that trap hex right 
between you and it. Oh. So then it's your choice. You grab one at random. Uh, honestly, I think that trap hex. I just I don't want to leave yep. you with a, a clear path to it. So I'll put one on the other side of it. Um, I'm going to go on your side again. I don't really like giving you traps when you're playing with Darren because she actually, when she levels up, she can enjoy traps. But I'll mm. go over there. And I think just to make things a little more difficult, make you take a little bit of a longer path maybe if nice. you're trying to reposition later. So the traps are all bad. There's nothing good, but we don't know exactly which one they are. But you can safely say if you're going onto a trap, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, <laughs> it's very simple. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, alternate placing uh, our... Oh, sorry, forgive me. We're going to actually do our cards first. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to make sure I get this right. We're so play testing different things. So I'm the first player, so I'm going to draw a hand of five. Mm -hmm. And... I'll talk a little bit just as I'm having a look here. There are three types of cards. There are They match the three cores of magic. So we have blue, which is your manipulation, red, destruction, and yellow creation. On your turn, you have three actions, one of each type. Now, you have a standard action for each color, mm -hmm. but you also have all your cards that match those colors. So the idea is if you can, you'll play one blue, one yellow, one red action, or one blue, one red, one yellow uh, card from your hand each turn. Yeah, and then we have our, our little cheat sheet. That's it, that's your standard action. actions. So this is all very much kind of tweaking at the minute, but this gives you an idea. So with a blue action, you can move and prepare a card for your next turn. With a yellow creation action, you can move and heal. With a red destruction action, you can move and deal a damage directly, ignoring defenses to an enemy, mm -hmm. or any of the three can be used to sprint two spaces once in your turn as well. Yeah. So that's and kind of your- the planning one is you get to put a card from your hand back on top of your deck. That's it, so you'll round. have it next turn. Exactly yep. right. Um, so I get to, as the start of the game, to do a little mulligan here. I am going to do mulligan some of my cards because right now they're not really, really happy. So yeah. I'm going to drop three cards. I'm going to drop two creation and destruction and then just fill my hand back up to five. So this is just something you do on the first turn of the game. It's kind of like a, a partial mulligan so you can help make sure your first turn's nice and strong. Mm -hmm. And then it's over to you to do the same. So I'm going to mulligan one. Okay. Ooh, okay. I can work with this. So we'll do a, a proper video, which again, we'll do with you guys, so everyone can learn about all the cards in detail, but we'll kind of jump in and kind of learn as we go. I think it's the yeah, easiest thing to do. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, so now we have to place our champions. Mm -hmm. um, so thinking about the objectives, and thinking about which cards I am very likely to play. Mm -hmm. I have a couple, a couple of options. One thing you guys may notice at home as well, there's no dice here. The game is very much deterministic, so planning out your turns is really important because usually uh, what we find is the player that's able to come up with the most tactical options, the ones that are both offensive but also keep in mind where they want to position the champions, is the one mm -hmm. that comes out on top. Um, so I'm going to place Kilgore first of all. Okay. And I'm going to place him right on the edge of my five deployment zone, close to this area. I see. And then I have to place one of mine. That's right. So from my side... Hmm. I think I'm going to just put Dugrin right here on the floor. Yeah, it looks like we both chuck our heavy armor and heavy health guys right towards the first objective, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm then going to do Goldar, and I'm going to put Goldar right beside Kilgore. Mm -hmm. um, actually, maybe I'll move him ever so slightly to... Yeah, no, I'm going to leave him just there, actually. Okay. These two chunky guys together. Uh, I'll put Suzai... Actually, no. I will put Darren yep. right here because she's super quick. Yeah. So you can get where I need her. Worth noting to everyone at home, all the champions bring six cards that are completely, completely unique to them and have their own play style. Mm -hmm. And when you play a champion's card, nine times out of ten, you're playing on them. So you really have to think about what is in your hand, what's still to come whenever you're positioning, and that will come with, with play. Mm -hmm. um, so Gwen is fragile but high damage, so I wanted to kind of keep her reasonably safe. I'm going to pop her um, here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now I know you have the first turn. Yep. So I don't want to give you any easy shots with Gwen. So mm -hmm. I'm going to put Suzai Boo. right here. A yeah. little bit safer. Justin has already learned from a single game that Gwen has some amazing range straight line attacks and staying out of her line of sight is, is a great thing to do. Because mm -hmm. you have a couple of different types of attack which we'll talk about when we yes, get to them. Yes, absolutely. Direct and non-direct. Okay, I'm already starting to plan a little. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, good to go. I think, yeah, we're, do, think, do just check, think we're done everything. So I now have three actions. So just again, that's a, a check and see if I have a reaction in here. Yeah. So that's something we'll, we'll come up to as we yeah, get yeah. it. But usually on your turn, anything you do will be just restricted to my turn, mm -hmm. unless your opponent has a reaction and they can react to one of your attacks. And each champion at the moment in the current play brings one reaction each. Mm -hmm. 
could change in the future as we bring more and more champions out. Well, um, if you have a one champion who's just very reactionary, it could be very interesting. Not saying anything. We've, oh. got, a lot, we've got a lot of plans. Because it's faction free, because you can put any champion with any champion you like, mm -hmm. we have a lot of different ideas currently in development. But we, we this initial six will just be the start mm -hmm. where we go. Um, OK, I really want to do something uber fun. I'm just working out where I'm going to throw them. So my first action is going to be a creation one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to play uh, I'm going to play through. So this is a Kilgore card. So first of all, to explain the anatomy of a card, this is a skill card. It tells me in the top left that it's a Kilgore, because that's his claw and that little icon on the top left. Mm -hmm. And it lets me move up to two. So I will move just one. I'm going to just position him so he's in front of Goldar. And then it says an adjacent ally may jump three. So basically, he's lifting up an ally and chucking them three spaces wherever I want them, <laughs> wherever I want them to go. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> go pirate. So I'm going to lift Goldar. And a jump three is basically a lift in place anywhere within my original position. Um, I think this is, yeah, I think I'm going to go all the way to here. OK. Yeah, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. OK, so that's my yellow creation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm then going to, let me just see what the best way to do this is. I really want to lock down as much as possible. So I'm going to use Kilgore again. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if I can get a lot of damage onto Dugrin, but I think he's just outside of my range, unfortunately, mm -hmm. which makes me mad because I love smacking the dwarf. Um, <laughs> Don't smack the dwarf. want to smack the dwarf. Uh, and then there's there's no limit on how many times you activate a hero. So yes. if you had a, a red, a yellow, and a blue for the same hero, you could just run Abs them three times? Absolutely. And I could even play one or two Kilgore cards and then still use a standard action on a Kilgore as well if I really wanted to. It's, yeah. it's completely fine to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend um, an action here. Uh, so this is any champion. This is my uh, manipulation, so blue. So it's mm -hmm. any champion can move one space. So I'm going to have Goldar move just one space to here. Mm -hmm. And then I can plan one, which means I take a card from my hand and put it um, on top of my deck. So it prepares it for next turn. I'm going to plan... Uh, oh, it's a tough. I have a couple of options here. I, I'm not sure exactly what you're going to do. But I'm going to plan with that card. So I'm going to put it on top of my deck for next turn. Ah, interesting. Um, I'm then going to use my destruction mm -hmm. um, as a basic move to. Um, so I'm not going to use a card. I'm mm -hmm. just going to use the standard action to move to. And I'm going to move Gwen uh, 2 to here. Interesting. And that's where I'm going to finish. Now, at the end of my turn, a couple of things happen. So first of all, all my magic cores refresh. So they are all available again. My cards that I'd left in my hand get discarded. Mm -hmm. And I draw a fresh hand of five. Uh -huh. Which now the means... reason the reason for this is that if I have a reaction card, mm -hmm. I can play it on your turn, but it will use up my core for my following turn. So reactions can be used to increase defense, to reduce any damage you might take, maybe even to strategically move or counter your opponent. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. The discard pile is also open information. So as Justin's kind of having to think, like I'll tell you openly my. Uh, intimidation reaction from Goldar is mm -hmm. gone, for example. So I, you kind of have that free information. So as you're planning, um, there's very little hidden other yeah. than Justin having to think about, is there something in my hand that might ruin his day? And as you learn the champions, because each champion brings six cards to the table, you can learn what the potential of your team and your opponent's team is. Uh -huh. yeah. So we have, have a champion adjacent to each statue and have two or more champions adjacent to Ragrill's yellow creation statue. So at the start of each of our turns, next time, yeah. We'll be looking to score those. You see, the problem is if I go super aggressive, mm -hmm. next turn you can kind of swing back at me. Yep, this is. But I know that from this, if I leave you sitting there, this is going to shimmy forward. Yeah. At the end of each round, a new challenge will appear and they'll slide forward. And at mm -hmm. the start of each of our turns, we'll score them. Now, at the minute, I'm not actually in a position to score either of them. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily have to fit me too badly. Yeah. But positioning is important in Sir Vancey Brawl. So, uh, first thing I'm going to play mm -hmm. is. Onwards yeah. for uh, Dugrin. So this is, this, is, this is a skill, uh -huh. um, again, for him. So he gets to move one first and then draw a card if you wish. It's an optional draw. So I'll go there. Yes. Uh, I will not draw. OK. And then each champion gets to dash one, which basically just means move a space. But the reason dash is different from movement is if you have a long dash, you can dash through your allies. Mm -hmm. so, but a dash of one is essentially a little shimmy. Yeah, so shimmy there. Yeah, perfect. And then on the other side, shimmy there. OK. Which is okay. very cautious compared to the first game we played. You were like guns blazing yeah. first time. And now it's like, OK, yeah, OK. See, there's, there's not a good opening right this second. Okay. So any defense um, that a champion has will reduce any strength 
of an opponent's attack by the amount of defense you have. So mm -hmm. a, a strength three attack with a defensive one will be two damage getting through potentially. Um, there are ways to do direct damage, which I'm sure we're going to see shortly, um, as a Zelda's pushing and pulling and manipulating your opponent in the game. And if you push your opponent into a statue or another champion, you'll mm -hmm. go straight through that defense and do direct damage. So positioning is really important. I hope we're getting that across. But you'll see it in a couple of turns. Yeah, I really am having a... A real think. I can feel, I can feel you going, yeah. I need to make the most of my turn. Yeah, so I'm... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play one for Suzai. Yep. Which is challenge. Yep. So this is an attack. Mm -hmm. uh, the icon on the top left kind of just shows the kind of spiky gray icon. And we can see it's a card for him. Mm. So it's a move of up to one. Uh -huh. So he will move to here. And then a straight line up uh -huh. to range two attack at strength two. So we'll hit uh, Goldar. OK. And then it will do an after the attack pull of one. Yeah. Now, is that an optional or an absolute must happen? An absolute. Because if you do the attack, essentially, mm -hmm. your after attack has to happen. Because okay. you're saying, I'm going to attack, so there's an after attack effect. This is fine. Um, I'm not going to react to it. So essentially, the strength of two will get compared to my armor of one. Mm -hmm. So I will take, or my defense of one, sorry. Yeah, so I'll take one so damage. You know, takes one damage. And then you pull me one towards you, yeah. which puts me right between two traps, which I'm not super excited about, I must admit. Mm -hmm. And then, if I can be clever... Oh, okay. Don't like to hear that. Hmm. I'm sad. Are you sure you don't want to come and play with Gwen? Are you sure? <laughs> I see you're kind of staying out of her way, and I'm not um, sure. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to th use this to throw you out of position. Now. Okay, yeah. So, uh, I've used... Oh, no, I can't use that one. No, oh, no, you've used your creation. You've yeah, used your manipulation, so you just have destruction left. Yeah. So, curses. The best laid plans. Yeah. Now, sometimes it's worth playing in a... Well, there's no point playing the attack card. Oh. So... You could. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pay to have yep. Gwen move twice with my standard action. So, yeah, Darren. Yeah, cool. Or, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, Darren. Perfect. So, she'll go one... Two. I love how cagey we've both been this game because the first time we played it was like explosions from turn one. This time we're both being, no, let's just wait and, and see what happens. Yeah, so discard. Yeah, everything gets discarded. You'll draw a new hand of five. Mm -hmm. You'll refresh your cores of magic. So at the end of your turn. Yeah, no, I was looking there and thinking, wait, he can score the yellow, but it's actually two, two champions. champions. Needed, yeah. So right now, Nothing looks like it's going to be scored next turn. I think it's more likely. So at the end of the yeah. round, we both had a turn. Mm -hmm. The challenge track will move across. So we'll uh -huh. move this one into the two victory point area, this one into the one. And coming up in a future turn, we will have, have three champions adjacent to the same statue. So we have a champion adjacent to each, two champions adjacent to Ragrills, and three champions adjacent to the same. So mm -hmm. there's also controlling. There's also um, leveling up. There's a few different types of challenges. But right now, we've actually drawn a bunch of adjacent ones just by the randomness of it. Yeah. Okay, so at the start of my turn, I check to see have I scored any. I'm not in a position for the two that are currently available, so that's no. that's absolutely fine. So I was expecting, I was expecting more mm. from you. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so let's see uh, how I can really take advantage here. It's, it's the nice thing about this particular game system is it's very much you're on the fly planning yep. the whole time. So there is no just set strategy. You're going to grind and pound each other. There's always something new to do. Let's do uh, Kree, uh, so my manipulation uh, blue. I'm going to play uh, Anchors Away. Uh, so this is a Goldar card, mm -hmm. um, which lets me move up to two. I'm going to leave him where he is for mm -hmm. now. And it hits uh, three hexes around him. I'm just going to target Suzar directly in front, no one yep. else. And I don't want to move. There's traps either side of me. I'm not comfortable mm -hmm. with that. So this is going to do a strength one attack. And then after it, we'll push for one. This is fine. So you'll take one initially because you have no defense. Yeah, I'll take the one and, and then push where you into are you the pushing? trap. Yeah, directly away from me. So, so into the trap. So the right. trap flips, and, and we get a lightning bolt symbol. So lightning bolt is stun. So if you have a Suzar card in your hand or multiple, you must discard a Suzar card. If you don't right. have any, you must show me your hand. You do. So we got rid of Flash of Jade. Oh, I'm good with that yeah, going. Yeah, that's what I, was really good. Oh, that's what you're wanting to hopefully try and get out? No, I'm, I'm fine with that going. That's fine. Mm. So the stun trap, we just you can remove it to the side for a second. Yeah. You draw a new random one from the trap pile. Okay. And you place it on a free trap hex, of which there are currently two. One uh, beside Suzai and one in front of Kilgore. 
Put one in front of Kilgore. Doesn't make me. And then that stun trap will get shuffled back into the, the open trap pool okay. here. So we'll be cycling the traps just as we hit them. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That'll do. So that was my uh, manipulation. Yes. I'm now going to do my cre. No, I'm going to do my destruction first, actually. Mm -hmm. So for my destruction, I'm going to play Harpoon Strike. Ooh, um, so really harpoon strike. So, the, so he's done his anchor, swung it around, knocked you back, and now he's going to harpoon strike. Now, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to move one of the possible two. I'm going to mm -hmm. turn to face Dugrin because ah. I'm going to do it's a straight line attack mm -hmm. up to range three um, with a strength of one. But after the attack, it pulls for two. Ah. So I'm going to do this towards Dugrin. Yep. Um, My armor soaks up your first point. Yeah, you could react if you wish to, of course, if you wanted to play one, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, so the first, yeah, the first strength of one ignored by your two defense. Yeah. But the pull of two will then happen. So the first pull will pull you into the trap. Uh, so that's oh, oh that's three, three damage. damage. That's huge. Push. Uh, so grab a three hit point, and I'll just I'll grab the trap because it's got to go back into oh, the pool yeah, yeah, again. Oh yeah, sorry. Yep. So grab yourself another trap and put yep. it on a free space. Yep. So. So the only free space is over by Darren now. Mm, that's there. Has to quite be there. unfortunate yep. now. And of course, the attack had a pull of two. So I pulled you one into the trap, but now there's a second pull where essentially he's pulling you into himself. That becomes a damage Oop, completely through defense. So Doug is on two health, which is mm, wicked. Painful. I'm going to do something really, really risky that could go terribly bad, but I'm going to try it. Right. Because it could be flashy. So with my creation, I'm going to play Chain Lightning uh -huh. with Gwen. Now, Chain Lightning has a, a move of two, mm -hmm. and then a straight line attack, which will hit one target and then bounce to another. Yeah. The downside is, where I want to get to is this space right here, yeah. uh, this, this blue one. And I have to go through a trap to do it, because uh -huh. I want to get a shot on Suzo. Uh -huh. If this is a route, I will get stuck here, <laughs> unable to shoot anyone. So my first movement will be to here. Uh -huh. I do not want this to be a route. It is a stun. Stunned. I do have a Gwen card, so I will That's discard fine. that. Thank goodness that was not. Um, and while I'm here, I have to replace this trap. So I'll pick a new one. And you'll notice there are no free trap spaces uh -huh. because there's traps in all of them or champions. There's three champions on different traps. Uh -huh. So I place it adjacent to your trap. Uh -huh. I'm going to be filthy. I'm going to place it there. Oh. I'm going to try and lock Darren in that corner. Okay. Thank goodness that was not a route because what I'll then do is finish my movement with one more to here. Mm -hmm. So Chain Lightning then does a range two or three, can't be one, has to be two or three in uh -huh. a straight line and I'm going to target Suzo. Uh -huh. This is a strength three attack and crucially after the attack if damage was dealt mm -hmm. it will then do another two damage to a champion that's within two hexes because it oh. lightnings through, chains through them. So do you have a reaction that might stop that damage? I unfortunately do not, but I do have a reaction that I want to do, which so is actually going to be quite flat. Declare it now. So I'm actually using Ambush. Oh, nice. So use your creation core. So you're going to spend your, your yellow core. Yeah. So this will give you one defense for Suzai. And this is a good time to say reactions of champions can be played on any other champion. Mm -hmm. So this is Darren's reaction, uh -huh. jumping to the aid and ambushing to counter to protect Suzai. Mm -hmm. I've realized this is awesome for you because I thought I had you cornered, but you're getting out of this. So this will, this ambush will give plus one defense to Suzai. Yep. So we'll do that first of yep. all. So your initial damage was how much? It was strength three against your night defense of one. So you take two, so I'll two take damage. Two damage on him. And unfortunately I then take two damage on Dugrin. That's right. So essentially um, that after the attack effect will chain onto him. So he's mm -hmm. down to how much? Zero. Time? He's, oh yes, of course he is. <laughs> so he now goes back to here. He gets knocked out. I get a victory point of the five I need to win for knocking out Dugrin. Yep. Um, he's not out of the game. He heals his health immediately back. So he's mm. back to full health. He's back at essentially his, his arena. He just, the wizards kind of go, poof, bring him back and get him ready to fight again. So yep. he's basically, he can walk back in mm. and keep on going. You're yep. really not disincentivized. There's no snowballing effect. You're just straight back into yep. the action. However, you get to level up. I do. Oh, thanks for reminding me. So Gwen, what we'll do is we'll take her card mm -hmm. um, from, from this side. So there we go. And flip her over to the other side. So her stats don't change, but she gains an ability, mm -hmm. which basically says when you activate her, I can increase and decrease her minimum and maximum ranges. So mm -hmm. normally she's like two to three, but now she's like one to four. So mm -hmm. it gives her more flexibility in how mm -hmm. she attacks. Yeah. So I'll take that. And if I can take her out, 
she levels down again. Yes, you will. You will unfortunately say that way, but, but she she might be okay. I have to finish my reaction, which so, is, yep. and I get to place myself next to you. So you stopped a damage, prevented a damage to Suzai, mm -hmm. and then as part of your reaction card, jumped beside the attacker, thus kind of ambushing them. Not only did you get out of the two traps I positioned, but now you're on the other side of Gwen, which right is next to right next to the traps, which I'm not happy about at all. Um, that was all three of my cores. Mm -hmm. So I will discard my last card. Two, three, four, five, draw five. I will refresh them. And I'll grab, that's yeah. yours, I'll grab these back. And then, is that you still? No, you're not in a, still in a trap hex, but I am in a trap hex. That's exactly right. Okay. So although there's not a trap on it, it's still a trap hex, because that's essentially the space on the board. Now we do need to check at the start of your turn if you meet any of the challenges. So again, we're looking for a champion adjacent to each statue, two yeah. or more adjacent to rag rolls, um, and then next turn it would be three a champions adjacent to the same. So we're not triggering any challenges. Yeah, I had hoped that Duggar would survive, and then with that reaction, she would bounce in and be next to oh, three, that which would have been, been sweet. Oh, that would have been cool. That's what I was looking at for there, but then yep. I was just like, no, chain lightning. Uh, oh, yes, because you, yeah, you would have had a champion next to all three. Yeah. Oh, shh. I, wow. I, I was sitting there. This is why I was saying your plan changes. Okay, over to you, sir. So you used a creation reaction, which means this turn you only have four cards mm -hmm. and you only have destruction and manipulation to play with. So actually, because of what's left in my hand, because of the damage my yeah. hand took, I can't do as much as I want. Oh, because you got stun as well, didn't you? So yeah, yeah. So I'm down to three cards, oh. and I've only got two cores. So you still got your basic actions. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to plan for next turn or just chip away at some damage. Oh, no, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've got something cool okay. I can do. So I'll start with uh, Dugrin, mm -hmm. and he's going to go for a shield slam. Yeah, so he'll be able to walk one in. So first of all, this has a movement of one that you can use to bring him directly back onto the battlefield on any of your deployment zones. Mm -hmm. Perfect. There. Then he's got a dash of two. So this is a straight line, maximum up to two movement. Mm -hmm. Ah, so I should start here then to do what I want. Okay, cool. That's okay. Yeah, of course then it I is. dash two. Yeah, perfect. Push one on him. Yeah, so each adjacent uh, enemy suffers one push. Mm -hmm. um, now this is a skill, which means I can't react to. You can only react to attacks. Mm -hmm. So this is just going to push Goldar straight in for one. So I will yep. take one damage from being slammed against uh, mm -hmm. the strat statue. Um, that's his shield slam. That's him walking in and just kind of bashing people out the way. It hits yeah. everybody if there's loads of people beside him. That was my blue core. Yep. And then I'm going to use my red core with him as well mm -hmm. for Blizzard. Oh, nice. Oh, I don't like this. So it's, I can move two. <sighs> yeah. It's uh, an adjacent hex I have to hit, so I'm not going to use the movement. Yeah. But you're going to take uh, two damage. I'm going to react to this. Block by one. Yeah. I got to react to this yeah. because this this is potentially a bit of damage, but then it would that blizzard effect would hit all of my other champions, which yep. I do not want. So I'm going to spend my creation, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use Gwen's reaction, Arcane Shield. This gives plus two defense, and if you weren't adjacent to the target, it would give more defense because she's kind of putting up a barrier between mm -hmm. you two. So it takes Goldar from a defense of one to defense of three. Well played. So no damage gets through, which means the blizzard effect doesn't trigger if I'm right. Uh, uh, yeah, because it yeah, says because no damage is, if. Damage, damage was, was dealt. dealt. Yeah. All right. So that'll be my turn. I'll reset my cores. Cool. And draw yourself back up to five again. Don't forget to put those near this card. Yeah. So at the end of the round again, we've got to move the challenges. We've we've really been quite stoic at the start of this yeah. game. So each one will move across, and we have a new one. So now we have control the enemy deployment area. So mm -hmm. control means have more in it than your opponent. Mm -hmm. So if the area has five, you, if I have one and you have none, or if I have two and you have one, essentially it's controlling. Yeah. Um, so start of my turn. I don't have a champion adjacent to each because Kilgore is flagging behind. I don't have two adjacent to Ragrills, and I don't have three champions adjacent to the same. I need to start thinking about which one of these I want to get. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Okay, I think... I think there's things that can be done here. I have a, oh, I, I'm not sure if I want to continue the aggression or not. Mm -hmm. That's I've got I've got an aggressive line in my hand, or I've got a very more relaxed mm -hmm. line of play in my hand. Oh, I should maybe go aggressive. <laughs> it's it's tough. Yeah. It's tough to know. I think I'm going to try and be a bit more tactical, and I'm going to try and chase after some of these challenges a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna. First of all, use my creation, oh, sorry, my manipulation, forgive me, mm -hmm. um, to play a skill for Gwen called Teleport. Mm -hmm. Jump four. So okay. she's literally going to disappear from Darren and whoosh, reappear the cycle tar. Mm -hmm. That was my blue. Very simple, very, very easy uh, manipulation card. For my destruction, I'm actually just going to move Kilgore. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Two spaces. Okay. And you've Kilgore to here. Okay. Like so. And that is literally my turn for this round. Okay. So I just have one card left, so I'll shuffle up my discard pile. My 18 card deck has now been gone through. Mm -hmm. So I will cycle into it again and flip over my cores. And then adjacent to the same. Hmm. Yes, you can see clearly I've tried to get all my champions adjacent to the same statue in a hope that next turn I can score myself a fat two points. Okay. Although you've actually just gifted me with two points. Have I? Yep. Oh, because each one of your champions are adjacent to a different statue. I did not pay attention to that at all. So at the start of your turn, we absolutely we check the challenges. You do meet that one. Uh, so that'll basically get discarded. You'll score two victory points. So it's two to one, five's the, five's the goal. Yeah. I was thinking about my turn and not yours. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend my blue core yep. to move one. Yep. And... Uh, Plan. Okay, so you're going to keep a card for next turn. Yeah, so I'll be moving Dugrin yep. into here. Nice, brave Dugrin. Okay. Which I think is a good idea. Yep. And then for my plan. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you're like, can I think ahead? What am I going to be doing next turn? I'll pop that into it. Cool. And so then I have a yellow and a red core left. Yep. See, I can't really get it going well enough. But I know, that's, that's good. I'm happy about that because I really didn't want you to. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going <coughs> to do is use my yellow core to play knockdown. Yep. And so it's, I can move two. Yep. But I'm not going to. Okay. I will do an attack of two onto uh, Goldar. Onto Goldar? Yes. Okay. Because I, I can't hit Gwen. Okay. And so after the attack, my allies gain plus two power against them. So I have a really interesting decision to make now. Do I really think you're going after Goldar? Or are you just playing me and hoping that I react now so you can get a freer shot on Gwen? <sighs> I'm going to take the bait and I'm going to react. Okay. I'm going to play Dark Steel Armor. Okay. So this will use my destruction core. This is Kilgore's reaction, but of course I'm playing it on Goldar, which gives him plus one defense, which will take him to defense of two, meaning mm -hmm. I take nothing. However, it also increases the defense of Goldar by two for the rest of the turn. Oh. So if you have a, a hard hitting uh, destruction card coming on Goldar, he's now sitting on a defense of three. So yeah. I'm putting all my eggs in the basket that you, that's what you were doing and you're not, if, if you now hit Gwen really hard, I'm going to have been foiled horribly. Um, actually, you've played this one perfectly. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> so let me show you what I was going to do. Yeah. So that would have been plus two on him. Yeah, I will still, you still get the effect. So um, allies will still get plus one strength against Goldar yeah. this turn still. Yeah. However, yeah. that basically nerfs what I was just doing yes. big I'll time. I'll take it, I'll take it. So what I'm going to have to do is I am going to use my destruction core. Yep. And what I was going to do was a double strike on him. Oh, so it would have been three and three again, but now my three defense. Oh, see, that would have been four damage versus now nothing. Yeah, but <sighs> I'm going to use the dash. Yep. To move. Just one to the hem instead. Uh, before, oh, this is perfect. Love it. Love everything about it. So essentially, it's a base strength of two, and double means you're doing it twice. Yep. So you're doing two and two again. Uh, I'm not going to react. So I'll take basically because of defense one, one yep. and one. So two damage on kill board. That's spin nice. these. Wicked. So oh, you, that was the <laughs> perfect reaction. I thought you were baiting me in to get a, a something no, amazing. I, on I, I was winding up because I knew I couldn't reach Gwen. So I thought <sighs> if I can hit Goldar yep. badly enough, yep. it'll that was be a, worth it. That was Kilgore's reaction did wonders for me there. Um, so okay, I'll so I'll reset. Yeah, end of the round. Go to the discard. I'll and get then it. I get one, two, three, and now I need to reshuffle my deck. That's it. And if you want to show the champion track there, challenge sorry track has moved across, and we have a brand new one, which is control the creation area. Oh, forgive me, I'm messing Justin's lovely looking thing up. There we go. Everybody at home is like, yes, as do better. There we go. <laughs> However, so, you get the yeah. Three points. So start of my turn, then I check for challenges. So I do not have two more champions adjacent to uh, Ragroll statue. I do have three champions adjacent to the same statue. Yeah. So I I'll didn't get... even have a push in my hand that time. So I will be on three, you are on two. Yeah. We still have control of the enemy deployment area, which will be worth two next turn. And then we have control of the creation area. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, got, I'm just, I've got two, oh, I've got two things to do, which means I'm, my movement's restricted. It might be chomp, chomp, chomp death time, maybe. <laughs> How likely is chomp, chomp, chomp death gonna 
B. So you're not bad. Suzo is on six health. Everyone else is full for you. So you're really okay right now. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah. Again, I... Oh. Last turn I played strategically. I think I'm going to swing it back to go into... Aggressive mode? Aggressive mode again. Yeah. Um, well, you're on three. I'm on two. Oh, no. Do you know what? I'm not going to go aggressive at oh. all. Ooh... I'm going to pray that I can get away with something cheeky. Okay, here we go. <laughs> teleport. Again, we're going to see teleport come up again. Because I have cycled my deck, you will cycle your deck at least once, if not twice, potentially in a game. Yeah. I'm going to jump uh, Gwen four spaces. Oh, God. So I'm going to jump into your deployment. Two, three. I'm going to jump her into there. Oh, God. Like Cause so. Yeah, because then you control it. And then my creation, I'm going to use it on Goldar mm -hmm. for a move of two. Uh, as a sprint, as a standard action, uh -huh. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, and I'm just going to have him go boof boof oh to my there. God. I'm going to put two champions in your deployment and say, can you stop this? Now, you can stop this by basically just putting two champions in there. But I have to put two champions in there. You have to there. put two champions in there. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not sure if this is perfect strategy for me, but I think it's going to make things interesting for sure. And because I've still got those two traps between Darren, She's a little in a tight spot. So here we go. We'll see what happens. Oh. I draw five, refresh my cores, and it's over to you, sir. We, again, we always check at the start of the turn for challenges, but you're not triggering any right now. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. No, you're not, but you will. Next turn, you would be controlling the yellow area. But hopefully, I pull you away from it. Yeah. Um, okay, I think I can do some cool stuff. Okay. Watch this. Oh, God. What, a, what, a, what an opening line. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm hit and run, lets me move. And so the difference here is this symbol is not direct. That's right. She's got three movement That's on That's right. So three movement first. So this will use your creation, uh, your yellow core, of course, just to flip yes. that over. So you've got three movement first of all. Uh -huh. um, free as you like. And I'm going to have to accept a trap on this one. Oh, risky. I love it. Yeah, so. Which trap? One. Yeah. Two. Yeah, flip it over. For one wound. One, that's fine. So pop, take a damage from there, and then we'll replace that trap. Oh, yeah. So grab grab a new one of your choice before we put that in. Pop it here. Uh, there's two, oh, three free hexes, so you can put on any of those free hexes. Put it next to him. Yeah, and then I'll shuffle these back up. So you've still yeah. got one more movement. Or, uh, yeah. Yep. Is that right? Three. Yeah. Oh, yes, there we go. Uh oh So in two, two damage onto Gwen. Instant decision to react to this. Instant oh, right. decision. I've got creation. I'm going to use Gwen's own reaction. So this oh. is two defense plus an additional two if you're not adjacent. Mm -hmm. So it's going to soak up all of that strength and do no damage. This but you still fine. get the after the attack dash two. Thanks, Ash. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. And then so the next one I'm going to play mm -hmm. is from Suzao. Yeah. Which is going to be challenge. Yeah. Oh, no. Which is move one. Yeah. Do. A range two attack, so he will move yep. to here. Range two, straight line. Attack Gwen. Yep. Strength two. Yep. Yep. And then pull one. I have no reaction to this, so this is going to happen. I'll take the two damage, and then you'll pull me one out of your deployment zone. Ah, oh, so you didn't send people in, you just pulled me out. Nice. Yeah. Love it. And that used my blue core. So I no longer control your deployment. Mm -hmm. And I have my red core left. Oh, this is, this is, whoa. Now, I have a keyword here yep. that I need to check. Yep. What is bloodied? So bloodied is essentially half your health rounded down. So if you bloody Current someone... health? You no, know, full health. Uh. So if I'm six and you bloody me, it goes straight to three. Mm -hmm. If anyone that plays D&D 4th edition, you might get the bloody reference. Yeah. The game's full of chock full of fantasy yeah. references. You're going to be able to play all the types of characters you I like to. i red core for Flash of Geod then. So I get to move to... Oh, lovely. someone. No, you get to bloody multiple. This is a triple hex target. So you can actually, if you move to here, oh, if, yeah. you, if you wish to, of I course, will. you can hit them both. I'll hit them both. Makes sense. So Gwen's on four out of her maximum six, so she will just go to three. Uh -huh. Gildar's on two, he's, uh, two damage of his eight health, so he will take two more to bring him down to half health. So she's on three of six, he's on four of eight. Yeah, that'll yeah. do. And it's a skill, so I can't react to it. It's just, yeah. that's Suzai's thing. It's all about revenge. It's all about weakening your opponent, countering mm. them, and he... Yeah. So okay. I will refresh myself. Oh, my goodness. So end one, of the round, two, I'll three, shimmy four, this stuff five. out. Yeah, these all so move along. everything moves one. And the new one is... We have, so next turn, have two more champions adjacent to Esme's statue. So that's interesting because yeah. there's a trap here. 
Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. okay. So at the start of my turn, I only have two cores because I did react and four cards. I do not have two champions adjacent to Ragrills. I do not control your deployment anymore. I do not control the yellow area. And importantly, I know you will at the start of your turn. Control. Yeah, you will control here if I yeah. don't get involved yeah. with that. Yeah, see, I, I had considered moving back this way to try mm. and defend him, but there's a trap between here and there which yep. might save me. I'm going to be cheeky. I'm going to ask, what reactions are in your discard pile? And see, so, so just, just Sue's eyes. Yeah, okay. so revenge. I was a, oh, It's the one I planned with because I was oh, hoping you would attack. Do something big. And then I could just swing right back at you. Okay, so... So, I mean, like, I find planning with reactions is a good way just to keep them in your hand. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was tempted to there, but there were other things I wanted to do. I'm so I had to use that reaction last turn, but it has really hurt me on how much damage I can yield this mm -hmm. turn. Um, do I give you the yellow area? Do I give that up for a victory point in a hope that I can double down? I don't think I can afford to risk that. I'm in a really vulnerable spot right now. Gwen is so close to being dead uh, or knocked out. Oh, that's that's card. Oh, I can't even play the one I really want to. Okay, so I think I think we're going to open up with Goldar. I think okay. that's going to be the play. So Goldar is going to use my uh, destruction core. Mm -hmm. um, he is going to use his harpoon strike uh -huh. uh, to move two, and then pull. Uh, two oh. uh, with after an attack. So yeah. I have a couple of options here. I can either mm -hmm. put a ton of damage onto Suzai. Yep. Or uh, he's currently on six health. Uh, yep. Um, so let me just actually yeah. flip that to tidy up my tokens. Um, or I can try and put some, uh, try and move Dogrin off the objective. Mm -hmm. My concern is I know Dogrin has a reaction called hold ground, which Maybe. stops him being moved. And Maybe. if I commit to moving him and you've got that in your hand, that's going to really suck for me. Yes. Oh, that's just, that's. <laughs> That's, is it? Is, is it? Is it? <laughs> Psychological warfare. I'm going to go for the damager. I'm going to potentially give that objective to you and go for the damage, I think. Okay. I think. So you're going after Suzu? Suzai. I am indeed. Or Suzai, sorry. Um, so I'm going to stay exactly where I am. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a strength one attack and then a pull of two straight onto Suzai. So any reaction. Uh, so you only have a blue left. I only have a blue left. Honestly, I think I can take that damage on the chin, so yep. I'll take the three. Yeah, so one from the attack, and then two because you get pulled and pulled again into my face, so that's... Yep. yep. And you've got three health left, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so nervous that Darren can kill Gwen next turn, but I'm going to... Oh my goodness, where do I put Gwen? <laughs> where do I put her? She really is that glass cannon she's as in, soon as she's in the brawl. Teleporting in her into your deployment seemed like such a good idea a turn ago. Mm -hmm. And now I'm kind of like... I wish I had that again. Yeah, I, yeah I'm either side of Suzai and Darren going, mm, shouldn't be here, shouldn't be here. Uh, so creation, is, oh, sorry, manipulation is going to be for blue. Uh huh. And I'm going to play... <sighs> is that the card? Is that the card? I don't think that is the card. So I think well, what's so I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna plan. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely gonna keep a card uh, for next turn. I'm just not sure which card which card I want to keep. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep that one, and I'm gonna simply move Gwen. It's either one out of danger, out to the middle, or it's one back into your deployment again to keep the pressure on. Yeah, to keep the pressure on. Maybe, but it could be death. So I'm going to move her out. I don't. I, I have too much fear. I have too much fear of Darren, mm -hmm. and that's the end of my turn. So I refresh, drop the five, and it's back to you, sir. So check for challenges at the start of your turn. Okay, so I get the yellow one. You do indeed. Controlling Esme's area. Oh, sorry, Ragrol's area. So you get one victory point. One, three. three to three. Oh, yep. My goodness. Okay, so I'm actually going to start with my blue core. Okay. And I'm going to do something quite interesting. Okay. Now it's I'm using an attack card, but mm -hmm. it's more for its movement than anything okay. else. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to get shield slam. Nice. So. So I move a one, then I dash a two. Yeah. So he'll get to move one to here. Yep. And dash two to here. Oh! Now the tables have turned. Mm -hmm. Okay. And interesting. So it'll be worth two next turn. Oh, I don't like it. 
Mm. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, time to go for the big one. Okay. So I'm going to use heavy volley. Oh, no. Yeah, this is what I feared. Uh, Darren. So yeah. what she gets to do is she can move up to two, but she'll move one to yep. here. Yep. Uh, range two to three. Yep. Three damage mm -hmm. onto Gwen. Seems legit. I shall not react. And a push of two, so a total of five damage. So three and then five. She <laughs> had three health. Boom, she is knocked out and returned to my deployment. And I level up. So now if I'm on a trap uh, trap hex, hex yep. I get plus two armor. Yep. And, that was and you my, don't trigger uh, traps anymore either. So Darren can now walk mm -hmm. onto traps and gain a benefit from being on uh, mm -hmm. empty or full traps. Yeah. And that leaves me oh, with damn, yellow. Heavy volley. This has turned turned bad. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Now for some funsies. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to use points yep. for my yellow. Yep. So it's uh, I get to jump three, Yep. Uh, attack for one, and then push one. Yep, perfect. So what I'm going to do is... Mm -hmm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yep. So your armor will soak up the one. Yeah, so defense of one stops the strength of one, so that's fine. But the push of one, absolutely. Trap. I'm not going to I'm not going to react to this. So the trap for Kilgore is a two damage. So I'll take, take it. And I will shuffle a new trap back into... Uh, wow, this is horrible now. Into here, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and then that will right. get shuffled so back in. So we have three yeah. over there now. Yeah. Super dense on the trap. Super dense. I will discard my last two. Yeah. And just so you know, as you did, did have, have hold ground, so I made the right play, but it still hasn't really worked out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So end of the round. Yeah. Flip your cores. Draw your hand of five. Have two or more champions uh, by Ragrolls is gone. It's off the end of the track. It was not scored. Control the end of deployment is still there. Have two or more champions adjacent to Esme statue is there, and have a champion in each deployment area. Oh, you oh. gotta shift me now. But it doesn't happen this turn. I've still got a whole round to handle it because it doesn't just appear in the points. It has yeah. to wait around before it moves in. That being said, though, you're on three. I'm on three. Did you get a point for knocking out Gwen? Um, Did you get one? So I. You scored. Oh, quickly, we'll do a quick, quick fact check. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you scored control the crew, crew control area, creation area for one. You had the ch adjacent to each touch. I don't think you got it, actually. Because I think you got two for each one, one for this, and then one for her, I think. Yeah, so I think so you're on four. four. Hope we did that right. If not, I'm still having fun. It's okay. Yeah. Don't forget to grab your cards back to your discard pile. Oh, it's yes. very important. So I've got a full three actions, mm -hmm. and I know a couple of things. First of all, the next champion of mine that gets knocked out wins you the game. I also yeah, and can't... and I've done a lot of damage to your guys. Yeah, I also can't leave you in the controlling position of my deployment. And I also need to think about the next turn where... I don't leave you uh, in both deployments because that would also be terrible. So here we go. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, you've done something I've been waiting for for quite a while, uh -huh. which is you've left a champion beside Kilgore, oh. which he loves. Oh, oh, oh. So he's going to play Appetite for Destruction. Uh -huh. This is a strength one. Uh, attack, uh -huh. but it says lifesteal, and this card gains plus one strength for each ready core you control. It's my first core used, so I have two cores open, means it becomes a strength five. Wait, the attack. what? It has no movement, so it can't. He has to start the turn. Plus two. Oh my! <laughs> ha, you, he can't move to do it. He's ready to pounce, and you left yourself beside him, and now yep. he's going to go. Hum. So, Suzai. Hum. <laughs> <laughs> and I here. heal all of the four damage that Kilgore taken and level up, meaning he's immune to stun. Uh, and gain a point. And so it's four apiece. To four apiece. <laughs> yeah. I love it whenever it comes this close. Okay. I have creation and destruction left. Um, whew, scary, scary, scary. So I'm going to use my creation for chain lightning for Gwen. Oh dear. Um, she's got a two movement. Her first movement will be used to uh, walk to... I need to... Oh, this is actually potentially quite bad. I've just realized that I'm going to zap myself if I do this. Because Chain Lightning importantly says, if damage was dealt, deal damage to another champion within two hexes. Mm -hmm. There's no champion within two hexes of Dugan so. right now. So if I was to leave myself within two, I'd basically chain that Lightning back onto myself. Yep. This is part of the risk of Gwen. She's kind of AOE. I'm just thinking, is there anything? You're also standing where I'd love to deploy. You're in that this 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 hex where I'd love to come back in. You're standing there. Uh, I think I might have to do it, though. 
I think I might just have to risk it and... Well, Dugrin is at full health. And what's yeah. the, the attack on that? So it's, You'll strength, do one. it's strength three, so I would do one. Mm -hmm. oh, do you know what, actually? If it's okay with you, I'm not going to do it. It's going totally to it's gonna, it's gonna zap myself, isn't it? You've put me in such an amazing spot here. I am yeah. struggling to see how I'm going to get out of this. Oh, man. Oh. This is tough. This is tough. See, this this is interesting for me because I'm, I'm now looking at it playing for the win play yeah. from yeah. my hand, and I think I have it. Oh, that's killer. So <sighs> it's win this turn, or I think I've got... Yeah. Well, I, I, ha I have to bring someone into my deployment mm -hmm. because otherwise you control it. So, or I have to get you out of it. That mm -hmm. has to happen. Yeah. So I have a few ways I can potentially do it, but... Oh, man. Okay. Oh, oh man. Tough decisions are tough. Yeah. The other thing is... I could play for the Have a Champion in each deployment zone as well, just by leaving Gul'dar where he is, but he is fragile. Yeah, and mm -hmm. if you have Gwen in your control zone, I don't control yours, so I don't exactly. get it. Exactly. Do you know what? <sighs> I'm just going to go, oh, no, I can't because I've played, my, I've played my blue. No. <laughs> Jam. <sighs> Dogrin is the perfect champion to put in an enemy deployment. He's just like, come and get me. Yeah, like, he's I am just, the He's just like, you're not going to move me in one turn. You need to <laughs> yeah, do yeah. damage over turns for him. You have done a great job. All right. So here it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to use my red. Also, he heals. Uh, yes, he's back to full because he was knocked out. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to use my red. We'll get that back. Two basically move Gwen to here mm -hmm. and deal one damage to Dugrin. Okay, so Dugrin uh, just with my standard one. action. No reaction. Um, yeah, that's, it's just a standard action, so there's no reaction to it. It's, oh, like, right. it's like a skill, so it's not something okay. you need to uh, need to worry about. Um, then I'm going to use my creation to move Goldar one. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think this is fine. I'm going to move him one to here and heal for one. Okay. I'm so nervous about him. And I'm going to discard four cards, some very, very strong cards as well okay, nice. because of the position you put me in. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that doesn't come in until my yeah. next. So, so you do have yeah. a little time on it. You don't control the enemy deployment because mm -hmm. I'm with you. You don't have two champions adjacent to Esme's, and the one that's mm -hmm. going to come up next, have a champion in each deployment, is next turn, not this one. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's one point. Next point wins it. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, I forgot to shuffle Appetite for Destruction back in. That's sad. So. Yeah. I was looking for multiple ways to win. Okay. And I can do it with two cards now, I think. Let's see it. So, I just hope you don't have a decent reaction. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to play is Suzai Focus. Yep. So all my champions are now gaining plus one move and plus, plus one, strength. one strength. Yeah, and he can move in, essentially. So he gets one movement, so he can join exactly. the fray. So he's going to move... Straight back in again. Here, Love it. right next to you. And all your champions, so including him, all get plus one strength, plus one movement yep. this turn. Okay, yep. Double strike. So this could be... Three and three again. My defense is one, so it would basically be two and two, which would take me to one health. Oh, I thought because I did heal for oh. one. I moved and healed for one. Mm -mm. Damn it! You're holding on by the skin of your teeth. And I am going to react. Oh God! Increasing my defense by two. Oh. So three and three. Damn stops. you! Curses. Yeah. Couldn't. All right. Oh. I'm now just fighting to keep Goldar alive. Yeah. But you keep forcing me to react, which keeps means my main turns are nerfed. Like, I'm not getting to do enough. Uh-huh. All right. So I used yellow and red there. Yeah. So I'm allowed to use a yellow. I should have left. So. I should have left Goldar in your deployment. I shouldn't have moved him out of your deployment. I should have left him in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, the last one for my yellow yeah. core is going to be Knockdown. Okay. So that's going to target Gwen. Yep. Strength and two. I am going to stay in that uh, deployment zone, so I'm not moving. Oh, this is amazing. And I'm just doing two damage. This is amazing. Thank you for attacking Gwen, otherwise I would have just lost the game. I'm going to react with Intimidation. Intimidation will give me plus one defense, so I still take one damage. Mm -hmm. But it will then fear you for two. Which does. So you have to do a straight line dash of two. So you either have to go to here, mm -hmm. to there, or to there. Out of my deployment zone. Damn you. <laughs> Don't. Oh my word, I got away with it. <laughs> well played. <laughs> but the thing is, I didn't have anyone else. Oh, it had to be him. Yeah. It had to be him. Uh, you could have planned, I suppose. Or, well, well I could have healed. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll grab this back. Yes, you could have healed. That would have been the other option, but yeah. yeah I, I used two cores, though, uh, yeah, which so means my next turn very little is... Today. So but moves, everything's going to shimmy. Moves, moves. Okay, so do I control the enemy deployment? No, I don't. Do I have two more champions adjacent to Esme statue? No, I don't. Do I have a deployment champion in each deployment area? No, I don't, because I moved Goldar out like an absolute numpty. Do I control the manipulation blue area? No, I don't. Yeah. Next point wins. You are incredibly point healthy. Game. <laughs> I... Oh, my word. Perfect. Uh, my turn is one core and very simple. It is... Manipulation to move to. Goldar moves into your deployment, and I say, kill him, or kill Gwen, or I'm going to try and hopefully take the game. And so I'm just hoping that I can get away with uh, controlling, uh, having a champ in each deployment, but two of my reactions are gone, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start of your turn again. You yep. don't trigger anything, but you would have won hadn't we moved Dugrin. That was yep. the key. But um, now it's, I think, game, because I'm going to use uh, Suzai for yep. our, the challenge. Yep. Which is two damage onto Golda, or, yep. uh, Goldar, Goldar yep. and pull one after it. I, I'm choosing not to react. <laughs> <laughs> so I will take one damage, because it goes yep. one strength through my defense, and then one from the pool. Yep. So I am on three hit Oh, points. did he heal again? No, just healed once. Oh, yeah, you yeah. stopped all the damage. Ah! He's on three health. He's on three. It's on three. Okay. Oh, my goodness. It's hard to convey to you guys at home just with all the cards and all the different options you have in your hand, with only five cards and three actions, just how many different combinations yeah. you can come up with. Oh, sorry, and that was my yeah. blue. Um, hopefully you get a little bit of this across because I think when you, when you play it you realise there's a lot of thinking potential and a lot of strategy you can come up with. I realise I've definitely made a few full paths here. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. Oh, this is so tough. <laughs> I were both doing a light bit of brain sweat bullets here. This is... Yeah. So he's got three left, yeah? Yeah. And one and one, armor. one defense, yeah. Yeah. I think you've got me. I think you've got me. I'm going to go for it, but I think I'm okay. going to come up one point short. Okay. So I'm going to go with uh, Darren for yep. a hit and run. Yep. So she gets to move three. Yep. One, two, three. Yep. She's then going to shoot you for two. Um, I'm going to choose not to react. <laughs> for strength two against defense one, so I'll go take one damage. I have two hit points left. And... I have nothing else in my hand that does damage. So, so it would be a flip move it. one. I flip it to do one more damage to him. And Leaves your turn. At the, so everything would move. And at the start of my turn, I will score have a champion in each deployment. There's no way you can move Gwen just to make sure there's no way you can get her I out there. I have no pulls, no pushes. Start of my turn, if, I get two points. If I had been clever, what I would have done, I would have moved Zazu and pulled you out of my deployment. But I didn't. I forgot to. Oh, man. Good game. Very good game, sir. That what a fantastic tight. one. Oh, <laughs> very well played. So that's sort of Super Fantasy Brawl. I mean, it's, it's super easy to get a feel for just three actions, playing your cards, getting into it. But as you can see, we're both kind of quite tactically. Oh, quite, yeah. you know, we, we like taking this stuff seriously. So if you like the higher skill ceiling, if you like really delving into strategy, mm. it has that openness for you to do so. Yeah. And you can always just say, I'll play with different champions this time, change up my deck with their cards yeah. and go again. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. This is definitely one to check out whenever it lands. Yes, yeah, so it's a long time away. As I said, I'll just mention it again. This is still everything you're seeing here is super prototype. We're hoping retail launch next year mm -hmm. with regular champions, releases, organized play events, store events yeah. for you to go and get, take part in those as well if you have a friendly local game store. Mm -hmm. um, and we will hear more about this later on this year when we kind yeah. of look at how we're going to bring it to you all. All right. Everybody, tell you what, get your comments down below. Tell us what you think. We'll move on. We'll see you again soon. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.